Yeah, thanks, Mum, yeah. I got your card, yeah. No, I didn't get any from anyone else, no. Borough Law, I were calling. Still, it doesn't matter, does it? They forgot last year, too. Bernard! Bernard! Hold on, Mum. What? Bernard! I'm sorry, Mum, I'll have to go. Yeah, OK, I'll... F sorry? Yeah, I love you, too. Ta-da! What is it? I've run out. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? There's a new one on the shelf. On the shelf. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> it's the Andrex puppy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not very ozone friendly, you aren't. They were only pot noodles, Bernard. Well, whatever it was, it's outside the pollution laws. You're full of CFCs, you are. Well, Fs anyway. Where's that thing gone? What thing? That thing I bought you for your last birthday. Oh, I threw that away. I got bored with it. Been on the shelf a long time now, you know. 365 days to be exact. It's going to be your birthday again soon, isn't it? Any time now, Purvis. By the way, Bernard, I've something to show you. <laughs> Woo! I want to be your teddy bear. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with something like that? You're not going to do anything with it, Bernard. This is mine. Cost me 15 quid. Baby, let me be Babalala. Baby, teddy bear, Babalala. Babalala? Babalala? You remember Babalala, Bernard? You were there in 1957, weren't you? In 1957, I was in uniform. So was Elvis, Babalala. <laughs> Elvis? What a joke that is. He wasn't in the army. That was a publicity stunt, that was. Never saw any active service. He didn't fight the savage um like me. All he did was have her cut and sing about wooden arts. Wooden arts? Moussa Den, Moussa Den. You won't <laughs> like him, then. Yeah, when he was short and had a moustache. <laughs> Where did you get that object from, anyway? You look like a sawn off Barbara Cartland. <laughs> they were in a sale. Oh, yeah, where do you get it? At that uh, new charity shop? What's wrong with the new charity shop? They glorified jumble sales, aren't they? Have you ever wondered where they get the clothes from? When someone snuffs it, they give his clothes to the charity shop. What the Ethiopians don't want, the shop hang on to. Let me tell you something, Bernard. That charity shop is very important to the third world economy. I bet my 15 quid has bought some remote village in the desert a couple of crates of badly needed Coca-Cola. They don't drink Coca-Cola. All right, Pepsi then. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, I know where this Coke came from. And it's nobody who's dead. I'm not surprised. Nobody will be seen dead in a thing like that. <laughs> This, Bernard, belonged to one of pop music's all-time greats. Oh, yeah? Who was it then? Cliff? Marty Wilde? Susan Maughan? No. Arthur Douglas. <laughs> Arthur Douglas? You mean Craig Douglas? No, Arthur Douglas. I went to school with him. You remember Arthur Douglas of Arthur Douglas and the Diversions. <laughs> cool. He had all the local crumpet queuing up for him. What's happened to him? Oh, he's still got the crumpet queuing up for him. Oh, he's still singing, then? No, no, he's our milkman. <laughs> Arthur Douglas is not famous. He's a legend with the women on the estate. Oh, yeah. And you've got Arthur Douglas' old coat, have you? Yeah. yeah. Where are you going to go wearing something like that? I'm going to a party, Bernard. A party? Yeah. Well, uh, what sort of a party? It's uh, not a birthday party, is it, by any chance? No, no, it's just a few of my friends from the squash club. We're getting together for a bit of a knees up. Squash club? Oh, yes. Very classy people up there, very classy. You've only got to look at the cars, Bernard. There's no fluffy dice hanging from the mirror, or no demented grinning Garfield stuck in the back window. <laughs> oh, no, no, very classy. You can't move for cordless phones and faxer files up there. Yeah. How long have you been going to the squash club? Since I met Arabella. <laughs> Where would you go to meet a girl by the name of Arabella? She works in one of the shops. Oh, Arabella works in one of the shops, does she? I wonder which shop would employ someone by the name of Arabella. She works no, in the... No, no, uh... don't tell me, Watson. Uh, I mean, 
I suppose she'd be on the bacon slicer, would she, at the butcher's shop? No. No. Or would she be tweaking split ends down at Jean Pierre's? No. No. Or is it possible she could be selling pink jackets at the charity shop? She's a very nice girl, actually. <laughs> There's no nice girls at the charity shop. They all look like Miss Marple. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, baby. Because from on a scale from naught to gorgeous, whew, she's a little cracker. Yeah? Well, what's she doing with someone like you, then? Hey, steady on, Bernard. Arabella reckons I've got possibilities. <laughs> oh, does she? Yeah, she said I've got facets. She said she'd like to lay waste to my rough exterior and explore my inner substance. She'd like to what? She'd like to plumb the depths of my character. Oh, and you want your depths plumbing, do you? No. I just want to get my leg over. <laughs> you dirty little devil. <laughs> Don't play the innocent with me, Bernard. You were just the same in your day. What do you mean, in my day? When you were single. When you were hot. Well, lukewarm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to go out Saturday nights, but not to get my leg over, as you so quaintly put it. Oh, yes, I am good for female company. But I was a gentleman, me. Gentleman? Yeah, not like you. Going out wearing pink draped jackets like that. Me, when I went out on a Saturday night, I used to knock them dead with me drip dry shirt, me pencil tie, me moor suit, and me winkle pickers. <laughs> Boy, I had style. Very Gerald Harper. <laughs> and I bet you sat at home listening to Nina and Frederick, didn't you? And wasted your time taking your birds to pictures. I didn't waste time at the pictures, I can tell you. When the lights went down low, you couldn't hear John Mills for the twanging of brass straps. <laughs> Is that what happened with you and Burrell then? No. Her parents wouldn't let us go to pictures on us own. Don't tell me, Bernard, that before you were married, you never... You know. <laughs> of course I did. Well, no, 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 I didn't. Not with Burrell anyway. The nearest we came to being passionate was sitting on the settee, holding hands, watching Take Your Pick. <laughs> Must have been different after you were wed. Well, it was for a while. Now she sits in her own seat, knitting, watching Bullseye. <laughs> Boy, I remember every weekend we used to go up to the Legion dancing. They used to call us the Fred and Ginger of the Skickle Alley. Skickle Alley? Yeah, well, we haven't got a proper dance floor. So they used to throw chalk onto the alley and away we'd go from one quick step to the last waltz. Times like that aren't going to come back, Perth. Well, you can still take a dancing. Ah, oh, come on, you can't foxtrot to wet, wet, wet. Mm. <laughs> you can do other things together. What do you mean? I don't know. Go up to the feathers. No, it's not the same in the feathers anymore, is it? I used to remember when you used to win to the snug for a game of bar billiards. Get well oiled, stagger home, and say you thoroughly enjoyed yourself. Now, it's just one big room, isn't it? Bouncers on the outside, kids with suits on the inside. Can't get a proper pint. All they've got on tap is 57 varieties of non-alcoholic lager. Um, <laughs> you've got a car, you can always go for a drive. Yeah. Yeah, I remember me dad. Years ago, every summer used to bundle us all into his motorbike and sidecar. Mm. <laughs> and off we'd go up the road. <laughs> Bernard would go for miles. And you'd see all the family sat at side at road, eating the tea. Ham sandwiches, boiled eggs. Vimto. <laughs> Two-way family favourites on the radio. The time now in Germany and Britain is 12 noon. Yeah, clear the old kid. Oh, I hated him. Did you? What could have clouted him? <laughs> Billy Cotton Banshaw. Oh, yeah, wakey, wakey. Uh, and on the way home, sing something simple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 sing something simple. <laughs> You'd have thought after all these years that I learned to sing something more complicated. <laughs> you can't drive anywhere these days, Perv. Because you don't have to drive, Bernard. <clears throat> Today, you can go anywhere in the world. Go abroad. Oh, don't mention abroad to me. Our girl took me to France, didn't she? <laughs> we got off the boat, walked down this cobble street, into this warehouse, full of wine and cheeses, and then French fags. Come on, stunk like camel dung. <laughs> Tell you, boy, France were crap. <laughs> You went on a shopping trip to Dieppe. You've never seen France. I've seen the real France. Oh, I've seen the real France. I stayed at the same hotel as Judy Chalmers. Never. Yes, I did. And I went to the loo and saw the Mona Lisa. <laughs> well, I tell you, I don't rate France. There's more to France than Tesco's, Bernard. Show the majesty of the place. Show them French shattucks and the Eiffel Tower. No, she doesn't like heights. 
Show the art and you triumph. Gosh, you don't like horse racing. <laughs> Bernard, why do you spoil it? Go the Orlog. Take her to Paris on a second honeymoon. No, she'll probably get headache anyway. And why should I worry about her? She certainly doesn't worry about me. She's upset you, aren't she, Bernard? <laughs> no. Come on, be honest. What's she done this time? All right, she's forgotten something. Something important, Bernard? Important to me, yes. Shh, I'm not joking, women. What a waste of time. And you're as bad. You forgot too. Did I? Yeah. Well, well if you can't remember, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a clue, Bernard. <laughs> All right. What day is it? Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday! Exactly! I know what it is. <coughs> Don't worry, Bernard. Oh, voila. Curve! Ah, oh, you remembered! Of course I remembered. I'm not likely to forget, am I, Bernard? That's fantastic. I'm put... What the hell's this? My timesheet. <laughs> what do you expect? A blanky blank, blank checkbook and pen? <laughs> no, I just thought it might have been. What? It don't matter. What? Now we'll forget it, Purvis. Oh, it's all right. You've changed all my times. I've lost four bloody hours here. <laughs> you weren't here for those four hours. You come late, you go early, you knock off to buy a jacket in company time. What do you expect? What's a minute here and a minute there, Bernie? What are friends for? Purvis, I've got responsibilities. I didn't get these, did I? For ignoring a couple of minutes here and two hours there. Give a man a stripe, he goes power mad, doesn't he? <laughs> Eckler were only a corporal, you know. <laughs> Look, Bernard, I'll change it back, then you can sign it. No! Bernard, why are you being such a misery, guts? If you don't know, I'm not telling you. Calm down, Bernard. Calm down. Come on, come on, come on. Easy, easy. Calm down. It's only me, your little mate, who plays cards with you all night and makes all your coffee. Yeah, and the one who puts four hours on his timesheet. Bernard, I'm your partner. And I'm your superior officer. Well, I'm your friend then. <laughs> friend? Call yourself a friend? Can't even remember my birthday. When was it? Fifty years ago! <laughs> Today! <laughs> Don't even think about it, Purvis. <laughs> Stop pouting. I'm not pouting. The wind changes, you're going to stay like that. Just shut up, right? I'll tell you something else. And not another word. Can be childish. I'm not the one who's being childish, Bernard. <laughs> That's me. I've had enough in here. I'm going out on my rounds. You're pathetic, Bernard. Pathetic, do you know that? And I'll tell you something. That's not your telly, Bernard. That's company's telly. You don't own it. You think you're the boss over everything, don't you? Hey? See Kyle, see Kyle. <laughs> well, you're not. Let me tell you that, you're not the boss over me. Well, you are in working hours, but you're not outside. I'm going out on my rounds. And I might not come back. <laughs> you 
miserable old sot. <laughs> You're a miserable old sod. <laughs> I've got no change on me, I've only got this tenner. That's very generous. Bobby, <laughs> 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 Bill, let me be your loving teddy bear. Put a chain around my neck and leave me anywhere. Oh, let me be. I'm sorry. <coughs> you ought to get a linctus for that cough. <clears throat> oh, it's the damp in here, you know. Uh, is there something I can do to help you? It's a super jacket, isn't it? I knew he wouldn't hang on to it for long. The moment it came into the shop, I thought... Oh, you're the lady from the charity shop? Yes. Right. It seems you require a duplicate set of keys for the premises, in case of emergencies. Thank you. Super, isn't it? It was hand carved by a tribesman from the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, or somewhere like that. Very nice. Oh, look. Technology. I shall feel jolly safe knowing you're keeping an eye on us. Well, we do our best, you know. Well, I must get on. Oh, certainly you must. Say hello to your little friend who bought the jacket. I will. Arabella. <laughs> I'll have a couple of them pork chops there, please. Have you got any bones from the man's dog? Excuse me. There's a fellow in there that's a very rich man in a blue uniform. <laughs> Your friend said you'd like to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> Through the shadows and the pain. <laughs> Young Cliff. You're listening on 95 FM to your very own local radio station. Now, after our next record, I'll be talking to Professor James Seeley, who's an anthropologist. <coughs> I think that's something to do with bugs. <laughs> so that should be fun. Just time now to squeeze in a dedication, and this goes to Bernard Cooney. Hi, Bernie. Now, Bernie's at work this afternoon, so don't you work too hard, mate. He won't. Your wife, Beryl, wanted me to wish you a very happy birthday and play this record just for you. Oh, and uh, Bernie, she says it should bring the memories flooding back. <laughs> with me, but she appears to have been waylaid. Ah, oh, here she is. Oh, hello, Arabella. I wondered where you got to. We've been rather busy. Have you two met? No, not really. Trevor Purvis, Lady Elizabeth Lincoln Stubbs. Oh, pleased to meet you, lady. It's obviously my pleasure, of course. <laughs> How do you do? I'm not so bad, actually. We met briefly in the shop when you came to buy your jacket. Yes, I thought I'd clock you somewhere before. Lady Stubbs has been helping out a couple of mornings a week. One does what one can. Oh, one does what one can, yes. Would one like to park her eye? <laughs> I'm sure you would like to sit down, would you, lady? Just for a moment. <coughs> I have a JP's meeting in an hour and I mustn't be late. <coughs> Lady Stubbs is a justice of the peace. Is she? You can't fix parking tickets, can you? <laughs> no. no, I'm afraid not. No, I'm afraid not. No, no. <laughs> you got that thing here? No, I left it in the shop. I'll just pop down and get it. Hurry up, because you'll be back in two minutes. I won't be two shakes. She's just gone to get uh, Bernard's birthday present. <laughs> Bernard is my maid with whom I am working at the present. <laughs> 
met him earlier. How oh, did you? Yes, he has a little bit of a throb on at the moment. <laughs> but I'm sure he'll be very pleased when he gets back because I have his birthday present. So he'll be very surprised when he gets back from his rounds. So that will be the end of the matter. <laughs> I appear to have something in my eye. Oh, well, don't touch it. It'll only make it worse. <laughs> May I have a look? Because I am in the St. John's. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have to sit over here where the light is a little bit better, please, madam. Thank you. Because otherwise it'll be very dangerous. <laughs> this won't do it a bit. <laughs> Hermes, what the hell are you up to? <laughs> Excuse me for interrupting this cosy little scene, but of course it's nothing to do with me what you two get up to. But I much prefer you did it in your own time. This is a security office, not a knocking shop. <laughs> Your pardon. You heard, Mrs. Bernard, you don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. I understand. I'm out there on the precinct doing my job, aren't I? And you bring your bird in here for a bit of rumpy pumpy. <laughs> Are you insinuating that we were. I was with him? Save all your excuses for your friends up at the squash club. He's here to do a job, not to mess about with upper class bimbos. No, Bernard. Now, come on, get out of it. Bernard, what are you doing? I have never been so insulted. My husband will have something to say about this. Your husband? This gets worse. Better not let him find out about this little lot, have we? Out of it, you pinbo! And don't ever let me catch you back up here again! Boy, oh, Purvis. I'm surprised at you. No, Bernard. In the middle of the afternoon, with a bird on the sofa. Bernard, you don't understand. Sorry I was so long. Oh, your friend's back. Oh, I'm back, all right. What's this then? Another one of your afternoon delights? Hey, what have you got going to your purpose? A ship system? <laughs> this is Arabella. Uh, Arabella? Yes. Well, it was the bird you were with on the sofa. On the sofa? Where's Lady Stubbs? Who? Lady Stubbs. Lady Elizabeth Lincoln Stubbs, JP, to be exact. <laughs> she had something in her eye and I was trying to get it out when you barged in. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. What have I done? What shall I do with these? I'm not sure he deserves a man better after what he's done. Here. What's this, then? It's your birthday present. I've never forgot, have I? Oh, Perv, you remembered. Ah, happy birthday, Bernard. Hey, but wait a minute. What about that lady Stubbs? Don't worry. Me and Arabella will go and try and explain things. Hey, but it won't be easy, Bernard. I know, but I called her. A... I know what you called her. I were here, weren't I? <laughs> we'll try and smooth things out. Bernard, what are friends for? For oh, thanks. <coughs> what a good mate you are, Perv. Despite what I said about you a while ago. Don't worry about it, Bernard. Bernard, do us a favour. Anything. Fill me time sheet in, will you? <laughs> that is blackmail, Purvis! Don't call it blackmail. Call it more of a way of keeping your job. 